current one is um, number one the aspect that they're falling on on, on these feast days, uh, and uh, number two is that um, it seems like these are occurring in three separate six month intervals, and number three is the fact that right on the spring equinox of next year we have a total solar eclipse which I think is very interesting you know so um, I don't know and that's one thing I don't know what happened with the last tetrad I don't know if there was a solar eclipse in between the two uh, full lunars but um, you know so I mean yeah I'll have to dig into uh, what happened with the last um, tetrad. Let's see if there was actually a, a full solar eclipse that happened right in the middle. Um, but uh, I think that's also one interesting thing is the aspect of you know we have a full solar eclipse right at <laughs> right at the, uh, 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 the, uh, the the spring equinox of uh, next year. Uh, am I mistaken, Jesse? Uh, but aren't we aren't we having two solar eclipses, one in 2014 of this year and one in 2015? Or or am I mistaken, Doug? The the um, we are having other solar eclipses, but the thing is, it's like the one in 2015 is a full, the full solar eclipse. I, um, I was under the impression one, we were having one in in 2014 and one in 2015, but maybe I'm wrong. The one in the there's there's one I believe there's one in 2015 in the fall of 2015. Which um, actually occurs on the uh, Feast of Trumpets, but I think it's a partial solar eclipse. But that, that that occurs in the fall of 2015, according to a lot of these blood moon charts that uh, these people have uh, uh, been using. And then there is a full solar eclipse. Uh, Right, Sarah. Sarah in the comments said it's going to be a partial eclipse in 2014 and a, a full in 2015, and we've got Doug up here. So I, I guess a solar eclipse is a bad sign for Gentiles, and the lunar, the blood moon, the full lunar eclipse is not a not a good sign for Israel. However, Doug, we had the lunar blood moons prior to. Uh, was it uh, 1492, uh, 1948 when Israel became a nation, and prior to the Sixth uh, Day War, which were good signs for Israel. So I'm a little confused. So how could the full moon lunar eclipse be a bad sign for Israel when they regained their independence, they won the Sixth Day War? Uh, I'm just a little confused there. Well, the... Or, okay, everybody can hear me okay? Mm -hmm. uh, the lunar eclipse um, happened after Israel became a nation. It was the following year, the lunar eclipse. Right, happened. right. Um, but uh, anyway, it's, it's, it's in history been a bad omen for, uh, for Israel. Now, Israel was also in war during that time, okay, um, when, the, when the lunar uh, eclipse happened. Uh, it, that was after 1948. I mean, right after they became a nation, of course, you know what happened. You know, all the all the Arabs uh, teamed up on them. Um, but anyway, um, yeah, you know, I I believe it's it's a very strange sign, and right. I, I think it's something that everybody should keep their heads posted to. Here's something that might be of importance and significance, Doug and Jesse. Terry makes a good point. I didn't read the articles on this, but uh, Terry is stating that the first solar eclipse of 2014 will transform the sun into a ring of fire. And I had seen that, but I didn't study that article. You think this could be tied in with uh, the tetrads? You know, where, uh, where, where's, where's this uh, going to be visible at? Does it say in that article? You know, also I would like to make mention that um, it was... Uh, there's a numerical pattern. Um, it was on Passover that the 
uh, that the Tetrad happened in 1492, uh, but it was um, on the 9th of Av that they were decreed to be kicked out of Spain. It was on the Passover that the, the, the decree uh, became law in Spain for all Jews to leave, but their deadline was on the 9th of Av of all times. Wow. Um, and on the 9th of Av, uh, that's when Columbus sailed uh, the ocean blue. Uh, I believe it was the day after, and there were, of course, a lot of Jews on transport um, to uh, the New Americas at that time. Um, right. Besides the fact that uh, there were a lot of ship captains that were getting paid a lot of money by the rich Jews back then uh, to leave Spain, and, and they were actually taking them out into out into the ocean and just dumping them overboard, and then going back and getting a brand new crew. They're getting paid again. They were supposed to take them, I don't remember, various different countries. I think Portugal was one of them. I can't remember all of them. But anyway, um, I just think it's interesting that the 9th of Av has always had some to do uh, with the Jews um, as a bad sign. And I think we could very well be looking at the 9th of Av in 2014 as uh, a bad sign for Israel. Uh, or maybe 2015, I don't know, but um, I, I think it has a play. Now, it just so happens that we are uh, at the exact 2600 year anniversary when um, the, the uh, temple was taken back in 587 B.C. We are right now at the, this year is the 2600 year anniversary. And if you know about the number 26, that happens to be Yahweh's number. 26 and it's associated with the promises the first of it was the promise to Abraham the first time that he would have a son uh, he and Rachel and then uh, they used the concubine the slave woman uh, at 13 years later uh, he showed up again uh, saying you're gonna have a, a son uh, uh, and it and it was at this time by Sarah and 13 years later I uh, you know, um, Isaac was born, and so we have a 26-year promise that's going on there. There's a lot of other things associated with 26 and Yahweh. That's his number. If you take the Hebrew alphabet and use the numerology, that's his number. And we are at the cusp of that 2,600 year this year, which is, to me, very strange of all time frames, 2,600. But there's other things. Uh, when you start using the 364-day calendar, you can date things. You can date Noah's exact time frame. I've got a full study on that. Um, when you when you take the 4,000 BC timeline using 364-day calendar, uh, there's other people using other means of genealogy to come up with the year 2483. In Yahweh's calendar, the 364 count, it happens to be exactly 2500 BC, but to our count, the 360 day count of the time, it would have been 2483. 17 years off because of the difference between um, a 364 day calendar and 360 of four days a year times that 1500 years, it just happens to equal 17 years. So, um, uh, King David, okay, the, the timeline between King David um, and when Jesus Christ was born, same same type of scenario. When you start calculating out, uh, backing out the 360 day prior to uh, 701 and the 365 day calendar count to um, to actually 2 BC, September 29th, 2 BC, you come up with a 1,000 year period um, um, uh, that's associated with between David and, and Jesus Christ. Okay. Uh, and also his death, uh, you can associate that back to 4000 BC using the 364 day count, using his calendar, the way the heavens move, but, and, and that comes out of the book of Enoch, by the way. Enoch professed that the calendar count works and operates on a 364 day count, and that's what really got my curiosity up. That's when I started putting these 
you know, I just sat down and started, <coughs> well, okay, what if? And I started with a number and just started doing the calculations and figuring out the days and so forth. And they coming up right on the button, right on the day. Uh, as a matter of fact, even coming up to an hour count, under count, an hour of the day count. I think you're going to find those documents that I that I shared with you quite interesting if you go through and you start running across those calendar numbers. I think it's going to knock your socks.